pregnancy loss is something that I've not really seen talked about publicly at all. And this story that you're about to hear is an incredible story of resilience. Welcome back to another episode of Irrepressible, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Resilience. And in this interview today, I interviewed Geraldine Strong. Now, I met Geraldine on a resilience webinar that I was delivering and she shared about her story that you're going to hear uh, in this interview today. And, and, and actually, it was what incited me to create Irrepressible because it was the, the tipping point for me recognizing power in other people's stories and the power in sharing our resilient stories together. Geraldine talks about the loss of her baby during her pregnancy and how she's come through that and come through the other side to go on to have another successful pregnancy um, with the birth of her second child. She talks about how she got through that, uh, what that looked like and the importance of raising awareness going forward so that people feel less alone. Uh, I really hope that you're going to find huge power and value in this interview with Geraldine. As ever, please make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications so you know each and every time I post a video and give this video a like as well. Honestly, I'm blown away by this one. Geraldine, I'm, I'm really uh, excited about this conversation that we're about to have because I know how much power air is and how much it's going to help people. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, good this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Feeling good. Yeah. Why don't you just quickly, before we get started, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing in the world. Uh, so my name is Geraldine and I work in marketing. Um, I've recently returned to work after being on maternity leave um, with my second child. So a bit of a um, head spin going into lockdown in an office environment uh, in my little corner of the world. Um, but yeah, just getting back into the working world, the children are back in preschool and nursery, so it's a bit full on, just juggling everything like everyone else. Um, yeah, and that's my backstory. Yeah, so you've just come back after the maternity of your second child, and I think that's, you know, I think in a way that kind of brings extra power to what we're about to talk about. So why don't we just dive straight in and just tell us um, the story of why you've had to be resilient um, and what the adversity was that you faced? Okay, um, so uh, a couple of years ago, I suffered a miscarriage. Um, I'd already got my son, who was two and a half at the time, uh, so... We had planned to increase our family. Um, it hadn't been an easy decision. We'd been back and forth about whether we should. We'd been through some other hardships um, together rather than just individually for me. And we decided that uh, we would try for another child. And um, similar to uh, my, my first pregnancy, um, I got pregnant fairly quickly. Uh, so we were excited. Um, we kept it to ourselves because uh, we wanted to wait until um, first scan to to share the news. Um, I think we told our parents, but other than that, it was, it was just behind closed doors. And then um, I suffered a miscarriage. I was actually in London for the day with work and um, physically started having symptoms. So on the way home, rang uh, my midwife. I hadn't actually had an initial appointment yet. Um, so, you know, none of the uh, conversations had taken place with anyone for where I might have the baby and things. It was still early days. Uh, but we I went for a scan the following day and everything looked okay. So they were very positive, but physically my symptoms were suggesting that potentially I might be losing the baby. Um, I actually, after the scan, went back to work and sat in on a comp and took part in like a team day kind of event where we did lots of um, conversations about similar, not resilience as such, but um, how to be uh, more mindful of people at work. And I was mm. physically going through this process and I just had this huge like bombshell in the morning. Wow. It was quite an emotional day. Mm. Um, but I got through it because you just carry on um, yeah. get up and carry on and then um i had a second scan booked for 10 days time now that doesn't sound like a very long time but it did it just dragged as you can imagine so i and i kept calling like midwives are brilliant they said just ring in if you've got any questions and 
you know, each day we were questioning each other whether, you know, I should phone them or not because I wasn't getting any better, not feeling any better. But I was still going to work. Um, and I had discussed it with my boss at that point because um, I knew that it was, I was physically um, suffering quite badly, but also like quite emotional about it and quite tired. Uh, so I knew that if there were any big meetings, I would need to, to I might not be able to control my emotions. And they were really supportive at that stage. Um, but I was physically at work. It seems mm. surreal looking back on it now. If I go, was going through it again, which, you know, hopefully I wouldn't have to, I would, I would probably have taken some time off at that stage. Um, so then the 10 days came and I went for my second scan. And because every time I'd spoken to the midwives, they were really encouraging and they said, you know, the, you might be going through this, but it's still not, you know, you might still have, have the baby. Um, my husband didn't come with me. I went by myself um, just early morning uh, because that's the way we do things. He works for himself. So if he doesn't work, he doesn't get paid. So, you know, you've got to weigh all these things up. So we went for um, the second scan and I'll never forget the, the lady who took the scan just saying to me, so you're expecting to have lost the baby? And it just threw me because I wasn't, I absolutely wasn't. I was, I've always been an optimistic, positive mm. person. I wanted to believe that despite, like, I kind of knew in the back of my mind, because physically I could feel like all these effects. I just wasn't mentally ready for that at all. Mm. Um, so it caught me off guard and, and then they confirmed it. And then I was put into a little waiting area room if you like to fill out a few forms to officiate that what was the process that had happened I guess to fill my hospital notes um and then I drove home and I remember calling my husband and saying you know I have lost a baby and he came home straight away so as soon as we got home um we spent the day together and then uh you know just were very sad about it it was just a very sad time and you know it took then probably a good couple of weeks physically to recover. I, um, I rang the doctor the following day and asked them to sign me off. Um, you know, but I had to initiate that. That wasn't something that was done on my behalf, which I think should possibly be something that post that it should happen. You know, Definitely. you need that time to process things. So I, I did that. And I, I think I remember them saying, do you want it to be, do you want the doctor's note for your work to be you're signed off from stress or you're signed off from grieving um and at the time i just said well stress because obviously my body was being stressed um but in hindsight again i would have said grieving like in two weeks i guess people feel the same if they lose a loved one and they need some time off work for that two weeks is never really enough for anything i mean it's a nice initiating stage and i needed it um and I was very keen to you utilize that time for me. Um, and, you know, just because I wanted to be uh, better, if you like, for my family. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I took the two weeks off. And then um, when I returned to work, it was quite surreal because whilst my boss had known the reason why, um, with confidentiality and all of that, they're not allowed to share that information. So other than her, no one knew at work why I'd been off work. Yeah. Um, and it was during the summer, so everyone just presumed I'd been on a summer holiday. And um, I'm quite, you know, I like, I like talking to people. I have really good relationships with everyone I work with. Um, and, I'm, you know, so I was keen to get back into it, if you like. And mm. every time I went into a meeting or I... I bumped into someone they'd asked me how my holiday was and I just felt from the very beginning I just wanted to be completely honest because I knew that if I th threw a mask over it I wouldn't be able to uh well my emotions would probably get the better of me I, yeah. I am quite an emotional person I'm quite impressed so I'm keeping it together now talking so about am I. it so am I. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't usually but I think that's that's time you know it's been a couple of years now and I think for me, it's talking things through, it's being honest. And it was incredible, actually, the amount of people who, when I did open up, and I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, like, pussyfoot around it, but I did, 
I didn't even like just wham it straight in their face. I just said, well, unfortunately, that wasn't the reason why I was off. You know, I have had, um, suffered this miscarriage and I was you know, physically recovering from that. And now I'm just in the start of the emotional recovery. And everyone was really supportive. And I think that's what I learned the most was that, you know, we are naturally supportive of each other if mm. people open up and um equally when when it first happened it was just after my birthday i'd got a big barbecue planned we we socialize a lot and we like having lots of people around to our house and all the kids and everything and i it was in between the two scans that this was planned and physically i just wouldn't have been able to cope with it so i'd send a message out saying sorry for the short notice but we've got to cancel and I didn't elaborate at that stage because we didn't know what was going on. And that was weird for all my friends because they were naturally concerned and inquisitive mm. about what was happening. And we didn't really, I don't know. I, I don't think I would have opened up in hindsight, but um, two of our closest friends, we, we spoke to about it and they were great. And then when we finally knew this bad um, result we we did share the news and it was then that i remember vividly one of my friends just turning up on my doorstep um sorry no you're all right <laughs> sorry and she had been through a similar experience about three years before she hadn't told anyone um before telling me mm. other than her partner and I couldn't believe it because she'd always been so positive always you know happy if you like it's so and it's not so that she wasn't she'd gone through it in her own way but she said that in hindsight she wished she'd spoken to people sooner about it uh, because people would have understood um the way she manages herself mm. now um and i feel like if i can help someone like that um to open up and to feel more confident in in these subjects which shouldn't be taboo um and actually like a few weeks later we had we did have our uh, party get together and her husband was talking to me um later on and i was still still recovering a little bit physically and he was so open about it like and he said it was just a relief to be able to share the the experience with someone else because mm. he'd obviously been um, protecting her as well so i think that yeah i just think it's really important to just talk about do the experience that you have do you think there's a lot of people that go through it secretly yeah i do having yeah. having been through it so um afterwards i think like i'd started following like the miscarriage association and i i feel awful i can't remember the name of the um the big company that just are really really great at supporting post miscarriage mm. um yeah i do like um um i mean the stats are incredible really and actually i think out of my friends probably 70 percent of us have been through it wow you think it's that, that literally oh that, yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah a lot a lot and not just in not not just once multiple times and i think that's me is the heartbreaking thing so i was fortunate that um a few months later we decided that we would try again and i did fall pregnant um and it was nerve-wracking because every single day like until i passed that milestone we lost our um ours at eight weeks and it was interesting lots of people when i started talking about it always said oh how far along were you how far along were you how many weeks were you how many months were you i don't think that's relevant at all no. i found i find you know people I, maybe they just don't know how to react or how what to ask or if to ask anything i don't think that's relevant i don't if you were one week or if you'd just taken that test and then it happened the next day like i just don't think you would ever not feel that heartbreak yeah do you think as a mum you form that bond straight away from the moment yeah, the absolutely line? especially if it's yeah i mean i'm speaking from experience it was we'd planned both of ours we've been together for a long long time we yeah. lived through our 20s together and had a really good time together and built this lovely kind of unit the two of us and so it was our next chapter 
so we had planned for it was everything that we wanted together yeah and with our son then and i think i said earlier on like it took us quite a long time to um decide on whether we wanted to have more children just because you know children are hard work yeah. <laughs> they're not you know your life changes absolutely changes yeah for completely it's just unrecognizable um and and then a couple of stumbling blocks before we start we started trying to have a second but yeah i just um yeah i think you form that bond instantly and, and even th- with your friends kids you know or your families you yeah. know kids i think as soon as you hear that news you want the very best for those for that child that's going to be part of the world yeah and it's not something it happened to someone close to me recently and i think that's why it resonates a lot with me because maybe until it happened to somebody close to me i hadn't um probably thought about it enough yeah. you know what i mean in terms of like i certainly uh, hadn't i'd known friends who had been through it previously and and you know felt sad for them but no comprehension of the impact the no. impact on the partner the impact on the grandparents the cousins the you know everyone who is looking forward to you know that new arrival yeah and it yeah. just being stripped away from you and i think the other thing that was really important was that there is nothing you can you cannot explain why it's happened and i think so many people blame themselves for you know something they may have done or they may not have done or like physically because it's beyond your control so if anything that's what i've i really took from people that i've spoken to and occasionally i think oh could i have done something differently but i don't think you can't dwell on that because it's just something that you know in my mind just wasn't meant to be on that occasion and and that's hard to come to terms with but but that's what i have to did it did it make you consider not having another child or did or or were you more like no let's really i want to try again because i i was in i was at the point where i wanted to try again because we had had a child previously so i knew physically i was capable of doing it Uh, and together we were capable of doing it uh, but then a lot of changes with your body in between and after you've had a child anyway. So, but I, 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 if I'd have suffered another one, I think I would have called it a day. Mm. I really feel for these, these women who have multiple miscarriages, who one who haven't had a child previously or who haven't and, and really desperately want that, that larger family or you know it's still people want a girl and a boy or a boy and a boy and you know yeah. they just keep trying um physically and i uh, physically and mentally oh, i don't think i would have uh, not survived another one but but i wouldn't have wanted to put myself through it another time to go through well, it. i feel very lucky i feel extremely lucky because now i have two amazing children and you know and our family is a happy family, but that that will always they'll they'll that child will always be part of our family. Yeah. So you do do, do have you made that child part of the family? Um, not yet for the for the kids because they're a bit too young. Uh, my son's four, coming up five. So I, yeah, and I just I don't know, but we certainly will talk about them in the future. Yeah. Absolutely, because. They'll need to know that, you know, life isn't a bed of roses. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not. And that's the fact of it. And I try not to shield them from um, everything because they sh- they need to know realities, if you like. Yeah. They, they are innocent and they, they should stay innocent for as long as possible, in my view. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they I'll certainly talk about them in the future, you know. Yeah. Because they're part of what created us all together yeah yeah we are the way that we are so yeah and so i'm conscious of, a little bit conscious of time what if, if we talked in terms of the things that enabled you to be resilient i think you talked a lot about being open about it and, yeah. and, and actually having being able to speak about it yeah it's probably the main thing yeah i mean definitely for me friends and family i'm lucky that i have a lovely family and a, you know my parents are really supportive and uh, my brother and sister as well 
Um, and my husband and I talk a lot. We always have. We've always been, you know, we always talk about things to the nth mm. degree, if you like, because it seems to work for both of us. Um, but yeah, harnessing like people's experiences. Um, just just trying to be more educated about it. So yeah. um, there's, you know, certain uh, times of the year where there's mis miscarriage and awareness week and things like that and just trying to to hero and champion that a little bit on social networks so that more people are aware and, yeah. and, and not to shy away from it if, i think for me I'd, i've always said like i'd i couldn't bear to be that person who didn't ask someone if they were okay like mm. if i had an inkling that something wasn't quite right i you know maybe people might not like before it but i'm quite happy like poke my nose in and if they don't want to talk that's fine mm. but if they do then at least they know that I'm there if they want to yeah uh, that certainly helped me and there's certain individuals that I know I could reach out to even now and go oh I feel like this today about you know and it's a long time ago really it's two years ago so some people might see that as you know, God, you're dragging that back up again I don't yeah. know but but I but no, the people that I have around me that aren't like that at all, which is which is lovely and it's comforting. Yeah, strong support um, system. And it felt like a you know that not being alone in it. That for, you know when you were speaking earlier, it felt like a really big moment when your friend yeah. said to oh, you, yeah. like that that kind of like me too. I've been through this too. Yeah, yeah, and so many did like that I hadn't known about, and I thought, well, why didn't you talk about it? Yeah, for me, I've always been very open like that. Like, yeah. Um, I, everyone's so different, but. I just I do think I do think it's very sad if people hide hide it or feel that they can't talk about it because yeah. it is it is a very emotional and physical transition. Mm. And I think it's why I think your story is sort of so powerful and, and one that will definitely be because a lot of people will watch this and you'll be the first person they've ever hear, heard say the words, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think and there's lots really of there's important. lots of help out there on you know and yeah especially miscarriage association you know they do a huge amount um and even if it's just putting them in touch but even the midwives like the midwife that i'd already been assigned to so i had an appointment in my diary for my initial consultation with her mm. and um it actually was only a, a week after i think so i actually kept that appointment and that was amazing because she you know they're there for all elements of pregnancy and delivery of birth and things like that and they they see like tragedies sadly every yeah. day um and they're equipped to to help with it and i yeah. think that i was i was very fortunate with mine and actually she was the mid same midwife um who i had throughout my second pregnancy so it was really nice because she knew what i'd been through she mm. knew um you know what we'd got through as a family and and was very supportive in that way so i'd say reach out like reach out to the professionals as well yeah um, because they're there to be used and um yeah midwives are incredible, incredible. yeah yeah big love for the for the midwives yeah. it has to be said yeah to a huge amount well listen look before we sort of close this down i just I, I, is there anything else that you feel like would be important to add anything that you would want to get out to anybody that might be or or you know going through or have been through what you experienced i think don't think that don't think that you're alone because you're not um, yeah. find any way that it works for you to have that release like make sure you spend some time just with you and your partner because mm -hmm. they equally you know they've also lost this person who they were already falling in love with yeah. um yeah don't don't shy away from it um i mean i i always have like little token things i suppose like we've we've got a little bit of our garden where we planted a specific flower and we really look after that each year and that's there as a, as a reminder um, mm. to always try and stay positive um yeah and just if you if you do have the confidence to try again do try again but equally you know there's so many other options out there 
for, yeah. for bringing up a child, you know, adoption, fostering, things like that, that we had considered and, you know, maybe we would have gone down those routes. I know a lot mm. of people who have and have incredible families for it. So don't ever lose hope because there's a lot of children out there who equally are in need, mm. um, who are already here with us. So I, ju- I just think, yeah, don't, don't go through it alone. Yeah. Anyway, there's there's resources online. There's there's phone numbers you can call. Just just do it when you're ready, you know. But know that it's there, and don't yeah. forget. Just kind of maybe remind yourself to look after yourself every now and again. Yeah. Incredible, Geraldine. Listen, I I really I really appreciate you doing this because I know it's a, I know it's been a big thing for you, um, and uh, genuinely, you know if. I know it's the kind of bit of a cliche, but if one person sees this, you know, who who was like your friend that had never ever had the opportunity to hear or speak to anybody that's going through it, yeah. then I think this has been worthwhile. Um, I think you've got incredible resilience. I think the way that you've come through it to have the family, and I will mention actually while while we're here, the reason this was born is because of you sharing this in a in, a, in an original webinar when we first met. So, um, yeah, thank you. Well, that's why, I mean, I, I'm so pleased that I took part in that webinar because mm. I'd just come back to work. It was an opportunity to, to do that course, if you like, and I was really amazed um, uh, at how much your story resonated with me from an experience of uh, my friends going through similar experiences and having mm. spoken to me about it. Um, and you just opened up that floor to be able to talk um, mm. and it was funny because I think in the session you did oh I'm just gonna like leave the chat open for about 20 30 seconds see if anyone wants to share their story yeah. and because I'm used to talking about it because that's what helps me um I left it like right to the last minute because I thought no Geraldine don't like jump in if someone else really needs this today yeah then then wait and let them have that floor uh, but it is hard. People don't. People yeah. don't have that confidence. So I do feel lucky in that respect as well. And then when I saw the timer go down, I was like, right, I'm gonna. I need to talk about this because there were so many people on that webinar, yeah. and I knew that it would. Other people would be able to uh, relate in one way or another, whether it happened to them or a partner or a brother mm. or a sister or you know, it does. It affects us all. And, and straight yeah, away, one or, one or two people in that webinar straight away put their hands up and said thank you. Yeah, for this yeah and I don't, I'm, I, and I think, you know, it's difficult in a work environment because while it's a biz, biz, big business that I work for, um, you know, we, we do know each other and you pass each other in the hallway and you think, oh, you know, now I know that intimate, intimate story about you, but why it's not necessarily intimate, it just builds who you are. So yeah. I really appreciate, I'm pleased that I took on. I took part in that because it really helped me. So thank you. Me too. Me too. Geraldine, thank you very, very much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it and I can't, I can't wait to share it with people. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing the others as well. Thank you. Thank you.